electrical tools. I don't think any of us like to get lit up when we're working on stuff. So there's some basic tools you want to use when you're messing with electrical stuff. I'll start with this book, Wiring Simplified. There's some other versions in existence, some other books, some other editions of this book, maybe a more modern one. I think this one's fairly new. But uh, th this has just got a ton of information on it for making sure you do everything properly. It doesn't hurt to take a minute to refer to this book before doing something you're completely unfamiliar with. Um, it also has a section on three-way switches and four-way switches. Everybody goes, well, how do you do a three-way switch? Well, if you don't know off the top of your head, you can find it on page 58, I believe. Uh, I've been there once or twice when it's been a while since I've done one. It's a great book. It's got some safety procedures in it as well, but it's got all the basics of wiring so you can really get to know what's going on in your house. Now, from a safety perspective, you want to be able to check voltages. Uh, before you work on something, you want to make sure it's not hot. And the way to, there's a couple of ways to do that. This particular device here is a GFI uh, outlet tester. It also tests normal outlets. Based on the number of lights that come on and which lights, it's got a code up here that'll tell you if the switch is doing okay or the outlet is doing okay, or if it's got a open ground or a hot neutral reverse, something like that, just based on the lights. And then it also has this button where it shorts out the plug um, to test a GFI plug. GFIs have testers in them, but that's a mechanical tester, and it tells you if the springs in there essentially are set up properly. But this allows you to actually short the circuit uh, to simulate maybe a hairdryer falling in the bathtub or something like that to make sure it kicks off immediately. Um, and it'll also tell you if the, if the outlet is live. Uh, another way to tell if, if there's power at something is with one of these. I call them a volt tick. I don't know if that's a, like a particular manufacturer's term for them, but that's what I've always called them. Basically, you hold the clip down until you see the light come on, and then as long as you hold that clip down after that, it will detect voltage even through insulation. It's got a narrow blade on the end of it that will allow you to reach in to um, an outlet to make sure it's not live before you work on it. Um, it's just a great device. It should be in everyone's pocket when they're messing with electricity. They're not expensive, 10 or $12. I'll take care of that for you as well. Now, this type of sensor here not only detects voltage, but it gives you an idea of at what level. I use these, this exact one, I carry it with me when doing home inspections uh, to make sure that like dryer outlets are live and stove outlets are live when there's no appliance in place to test that way. Because it will tell me if it's 110 or 220, I can test each leg of it by going from a ground to each leg and that sort of thing. Good tester. A basic multi-tester like this allows you to test a continuity to make sure there's no breaks in lines. Like if you want to make sure from point A to point B a line doesn't have any cuts in it, this would be the tool you would use for that. It also detects a wide range of voltage and other things. These are fairly inexpensive. A good one's $25 or $30. Uh, good useful tool as well. Now, if you're having a problem getting a particular room turned off, you need that outlet uh, the power turned off so you can get it switched and you just can't figure out which breaker it is and you don't want to turn off the whole house. This is the tool for you. Uh, a number of manufacturers make something similar, but basically this plugs into the outlet you're testing and then you go to the breaker box and using this tool you can determine which breaker is attached to the outlet you've plugged this into. They also come with adapters so you can screw them in a light socket hole for a light bulb and uh, check a light fixture that way as well. Uh, very useful tool. It'll save you a lot of time, there's no doubt. And it keeps you from having to turn off the whole house. Uh, those are a little more expensive. I think this set was $35. Um, but if you're working either in a large house or you definitely need to make sure you don't turn it all off, this is a great way to go. Basic uh, a fish tape such as this allows you to fish tape through the walls, or not tape through the walls, this is the tape. It allows you to fish the electrical line, the Romex, or whatever kind of electrical wire supply line you're using to fish it from one difficult location to the other simply by running the Romex up and taping it to it. Um, once you've got it fished through the way you want, and then you can pull it back through and you've got the wire through the wall where you wanted it. So a good fish tape uh, is a valuable tool. They come in a wide array of, of sizes and um, high visibility ones where they almost glow in the dark and then uh, quite a, a wide range of lengths as well. You can get them pretty darn long if you need a real long one for some reason. Uh, they're great that way. Uh, you've got your basic hand tools over here. Everything from a razor knife to some wire cutters, a uh, pair of pliers, some channel locks, needle nose pliers. You've got these nut drivers here. These come in handy when you're working on um, ceiling light fixtures and uh, ceiling fans. Uh, they can really save you a headache sometimes there when you come across something that's mounted with a nut. 
instead of a screw of some sort. Obviously, you've got screwdrivers of different lengths, Phillips and standard heads. Um, a Sharpie comes in handy almost every day on everything I do, so pretty invaluable piece. Look, I got a pocket for one. That's how much I love them. Okay. Um, basic electrical tape. You get what you pay for with electrical tape. Now, while I won't pay $6 for a roll, I will pay three, maybe three fifty, and I will never buy a roll that's only a dollar or less. Um, I, there's just things about them that make them dramatically different. Electrical tape, for those of you that are curious, it becomes a waterproof application when it's stretched far enough that it begins to change color. That might be difficult to see, but it starts getting kind of a light gray. And then you know you've really stretched it enough that it's got great adhesion and, and uh, water resistance to it. Otherwise, under normal applications, just make sure you're getting a good, decent quality electrical tape. Now, I have this guy here, this leather holder that has the vast majority of the tools I will need in almost everything I do. Half the time I open my electrical box, my primary electrical box, I just dig this guy out, I clip a volt tick on it, and I'm off to do what needs to be done. It's got a roll of quality electrical tape on it that you can see I've just used a single piece of Romex bent in a T. Uh, that allows me to get the tape off rather easily and put the tape back on rather easily. Not, maybe not one-handed, but um, and that's just hanging from the clip. I've got a Phillips and Standard screwdriver. I've got a big pair of, of cutters. Uh, these are fabulous for, they're lineman's pliers, I think they're commonly referred to as, and they're just fabulous for a wide array of, jo array of, of jobs. Um, these are the wire cutters I use most of the time. Um, they not only have a section that cuts, but they can strip individual wires, 14 gauge or 12 gauge. They also separate the insulation, the outer insulation off of the Romex um, in the 14-2 or in the 12-2, so you can get that outer layer of white insulation off easily. And then the very end is great for grabbing the, the, the end of the copper wire and giving it the right twist to get it to wrap around the screws on a switch or an outlet so that they're already pre-shaped and ready to go. This is a great tool. I saw one the other day in a guy's hand. He was buying it at a hardware store and I, I went to look for it and they were out of it. But the one he had had a slight angle at the end of it that allowed him to reach in and strip the insulation off inside a box. That was exciting, but they didn't have any. Sooner or later, I'll be upgrading to one of those. But it's a fabulous tool and uh, should keep you prepared there. The last thing I wanted to show you is if you come across what's called armored uh, Romex or armored uh, supply line wire, uh, it can be a challenge. It's already got the wire inside of it, the electrical wires inside of it, but how do you cut it? Well, it is a challenge, and the easiest way to do that is with the tool designed just for it. This is a roto split, and it's designed to clamp onto this armored wire and cut just a small enough section that you can twist it to separate it and then cut the wires underneath. I'll show you how that works real quick. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to grab the wire here. I'm going to squeeze it to hold it in place. I'm going to turn this until it begins to move free. Yep, should be good. I'm going to open it, set the tool down, and the small cut that it made on the back there should allow me to twist it free so that I can cut the wires. And that allows you to intersect this armored cable at any, any position and get the lengths cut that you need for that. So that's really the last fancy electrical tool I have. But with these things in mind, you can make sure the electricity is off so you or someone you care about doesn't get shocked. And you can also get the job accomplished properly and efficiently. Now go get that electrical project done because you've got better things to do.